Proteins all function through folding into specific conformations. What do we currently know about the structural biology of protein moonlighting? Not much. In some cases, such as aconitase, proteins are known to fold into different forms having different functions. In other cases, different functional sites on the same protein can undertake different roles. We have looked at antibodies as a model of how much change is needed to impart a new function. Before we can really talk about protein moonlighting, we need to know what we mean by function. This is not trivial to define. For example, the fact that a protein is an enzyme is a function, but we can also define more detailed levels of function by looking at the type of reaction catalyzed, the bonds that are affected, and the specific substrate. The enzyme classification, EC numbers, do exactly that, providing a hierarchical classification of enzyme function. Alternatively, the gene ontology defines three hierarchies which specify the biological process, the process in which the protein is involved, the cellular component, where in the cell the process occurs, and the molecular function, the precise activity of the protein. In other words, the what, the where, and the how. Proteins often fold into discrete domains, each of which can have a distinct function. In general, this is not moonlighting because the distinct functions are merely different aspects of the overall function of the protein. Indeed, protein domains can be considered as evolutionary building blocks that can be assembled to provide a protein of new function. This image, taken from the superfamily database, illustrates the occurrence of nucleotidyl transferase domains shown in red. Mostly, these occur together with PAP-OAS1 binding domains, but they also occur with a wide range of other domains, including RNA binding domains, zinc fingers, and BRCT domains. None of these proteins would be considered moonlighting merely because they contain domains having different functions. Antibodies consist of four chains, two identical heavy chains shown in blue and yellow, and two identical light chains both shown in red. The domains have different functions. The FV region at the end of each of the arms is involved in antigen binding. To be precise, just six complementarity determining regions, known as CDRs, three from each chain, which are loops, come together to form the antigen combining site, one on each arm. The FC fragment, forming the stem of the Y shape, is involved in binding molecules such as C1Q of the complement cascade and the FC gamma receptor that are responsible for initiating the rest of the immune response. Clearly, antibodies do not moonlight since they are both aspects of the same overall function. It is generally the case that proteins, or rather protein domains, which are homologous, that is, they have descended from a common ancestor, have a common or closely related function. Given that binding of a protein to another specific molecule can be defined as its detailed function, as opposed to a general function of simply binding, antibodies as a family are consummate moonlighters. The range of molecules to which an antibody can bind with high specificity and affinity is virtually infinite. Considering antibodies at the family level, how much must they change their sequence in order to change the antigen to which they bind? Using the Cabot collection of antibody sequences, we extracted the CDR loops where the antigen is known and compared their sequences. We then selected examples where the sequence identity in the CDRs is above 90% and where the antigens are very different. Antibodies P65D63 and ASWU1 bind to very different antigens. One binds to a small organic molecule while the other binds to a small nucleolar RNA and ribonuclear proteins. However, when we look at the sequences of the CDRs, we find that there are just three amino acid differences and six amino acid insertions. The level of similarity in the CDRs is similar to what is seen between antibodies that bind the protein cytochrome C from mice compared with pigeons. Antibodies 1G2 and E12 both bind to proteins, but these proteins are clearly not homolo homologues and have less than 20% sequence identity. Despite these very different antigens, the antibodies show just four amino acid differences in the CDRs, one of which is a conservative change, and six insertions. D1.3 and AF14 again are antibodies that bind two very different proteins. They're clearly not homologues. D1.3 binds to hen egg white lysozyme, while AF14 is a so-called anti-idiotypic antibody that binds to the combining site of another antibody called E5.2. Lysozyme and E5.2 are clearly unrelated proteins, yet antibodies D1.3 and AF14 have just four amino acid differences out of 56 amino acids in the CDRs. In fact, there is an interesting relationship between E5.2, the antibody to which AF14 binds, and lysozyme. E5.2 is itself an anti-idiotypic antibody that binds to D1.3, which, as we know, binds lysozyme. 
In other words, AF14 binds A5.2, which binds D1.3, which in turn binds lysozyme. Consequently, E5.2 is somehow mimicking the surface of lysozyme. In summary, we see that antibodies can radically change their specificity by changing just a small number of amino acids within the CDRs. The lesson for protein moonlighting is that it may only be necessary to make very small changes to the surface of a protein in order to introduce some new binding activity. Returning to the example of antibody AF14 that binds E5.2, which in turn binds D1.3, which binds lysozyme, could E5.2 or D1.3 be considered to be moonlighting? After all, they both bind to two distinct proteins. In my opinion, no. Binding alone should not be considered to be a moonlighting function unless there is some selective pressure for that binding to be maintained. The ability of CD4 on T cell surfaces to bind HIV or for ICAM1 to bind rhinovirus cannot be considered a moonlighting function. Indeed, there is selective pressure for these things not to occur. On the other hand, if a pathogen is able to exploit an existing protein to act as an adhesin or a virulence factor in order to allow infection, that is a clear case of moonlighting.